It's Sunday afternoon and I'm loading my truck for tomorrow morning because we're gonna pour the slab and that happens really early. So I've got a few special things for slabs. I've got these knee boards that will help us to scoot around on our knees and trowel the edges of the concrete before it's all the way dry. And I've got my magnesium floats, Marshall Town. Jamie's gonna be picking up a few things as well on the way. He's gonna get a power screed and a power trowel and those are two pieces of machinery that will help us with the slab. We also bought some special concrete shoes <laughs> that you slip on over your regular shoes, sort of like snowshoes, I guess, that will help us to walk around as we're running that power trowel without leaving footprints in our sort of not completely dry slab as we do it. Monday morning. Back on the mountain, Jamie just called me. He's waiting at the rental place. They sent our power screed to the wrong store. Uh, they sent it to Cashiers, and where he is is Silva, which is right over the top of those couple ridges, and Cashiers is like two more ridges over. So hopefully that's gonna get there in time for him to get here in time. Otherwise, we're gonna be hand screeding, which is not ideal. First thing I gotta do is dig out some gravel to thicken the slab in a couple spots. Checked with the truss engineer and he's got two load bearing points on this truss system. So I'm gonna dig those out and then get our vapor barrier down. What is that? I don't know. I think you just stick it in me and... We stick that in you? Yeah. <laughs> How do we know to do it? Where do you stick it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a really good question. <laughs> Dude, just like the Ikea instructions. Okay. Oh, okay. Directly into your heart. <laughs> oh, right into the eyeball. <laughs> there's our power trial, but there's no power screed. What happened, Jamie? Uh, they uh, had a little mix-up, I guess, and forgot to get it for us. Mm. Come on, sunshine. Here's our final piece of very important concrete equipment, the bowl float with an extension handle. And on this type, you twist the handle like that, and it adjusts the angle of the float. It's pretty nice. Jono and Arlo are getting the anchor bolts put in and <laughs> they're going in every 16 inches because of the wind zone here. That's a lot more than usual. And they line up with all of our vertical rebar as well and lap, so it should be a really strong wall. We put a mark on all these, that red line. That's how much they need to stick up. Stick out. This place has to have two mud sills, double layer, that's three inches. That's why they're sticking up so much. And that's also for uh, coats for the wind zone. So we're running our concrete into the top of these pegs. And then Jamie's leveling it out with our hand screed board. It's working okay, it's just a little slower. We're getting it. jump on the second half, pump it in, screed it, bolt load it, and we'll be done and just wait for it to harden up so we can get on it. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. We'll see y'all later.
Okay, there it is. We've got our slab placed and it's ready to dry. <laughs> we didn't do the anchor bolts on the front. We're gonna drill and epoxy those in because every time we do them, no matter how good we plan it, we end up like under a stud or under the edge of a jack or somewhere we don't wanna be. So we're gonna build the wall, then drill and epoxy those in so they end up where we want them. How'd your gators work, man? Great, man. I didn't even get anything on them. <laughs> It's the way to do it. You made it. I want to get around that plumbing. You want us to throw your lunch out there? Some other things I want to mention about the concrete here is that we poured it on about a five and a half slump. And secondly, it has fiber additive, which is a reinforcement and that's why we don't have steel in here is that we use fiber reinforced concrete and there's no heavy trucks or anything driving on this it's just for a floor for their basement and it's not the finished floor either uh, at some point if they finish it they will do some sort of a floating floor over top no power yet got a frame tomorrow so it means you got to bring your generator gonna break out the Jenny don't forget it thank you while we're sitting here guarding the concrete, I went ahead and put in our lumber order that's gonna to arrive today later for all of the pressure treated plates that go up top. This whole wall right here, the framing, which has pressure treated plates on the sides and the bottom, by the way. Arlo's gonna do a test for if we're ready to put the machine on. Let me see what you got, Arlo. Piece of pea gravel. He's going to toss the piece of pea gravel in the air. If it sticks in the concrete, Ooh, I'd probably put it on. Then we're not ready, but it bounced. Yeah. So if it sticks and goes nowhere, then they're like, don't do it. I think it's time. Man, I think you, we, we I, I think it's time. On, I think. Yep, I think we'll do it. I think we do. This is where I've gone around the edges with the hand trowel and sort of worked the cream to the top while it's still a little wet. This is too wet to get the machine on yet. And I've gone around this whole back. And so once the machine can get on there, the edges are done. Cause that thing won't get all the way to the edges the way it's designed. We usually run the machine really slow and the blades at a flat kind of angle on the soft stuff. And as it gets harder, turn the speed up and turn the blades steeper so they have more bite and they'll finish it off really hard and shiny and smooth. Here's a quick rundown on this machine if you've never used one before, the power trowel. This adjusts your blade angle and this is your throttle. This is a centrifugal safety switch. So while you're running it, it's in that position. If somehow, this thing gets away from you and starts spinning out of control. This will flip to here and shut the machine off. I'm gonna play a video really quick of what happens if, if this doesn't work. And we're back. To control this thing, you see Jamie going left and right. If you lift up on the handles like that, this thing will go left. If you push down on the handles, this thing will go right, and that's pretty much it. You just push it back and forth. That is for hooking to a crane in case you gotta drop this thing down into a basement that doesn't have an open side like this. And last, this thing has like a foam pad on the bar. That's so that you can actually brace this to your body and it doesn't beat you up. And I do that pretty much every time I run one to help keep it under good control. A little black in there. We've run the trowel across this again. You can see this kind of burned looking area. That's about done. That's about as smooth as we're gonna get it. Over here, the concrete's been in the shade the whole time, so it's not drying as fast. You can see it's not as smooth. So we gotta keep kind of working over as that part dries. That wasn't bad, fellas. I was kind of nervous, but that, that was... You just gotta stay cool and calm, you know? Something could still go wrong, I guess, but... 
Yeah. That was. What could go wrong? I don't know. Something will go Something. wrong. Something. <laughs> I mean, if we went away right now, it would just be a little rough sandy on this side over here. Well, right? I just always think about the time that Eric pulled the start handle and the and the rope out of the machine. Oh, it came out? Yeah. Right in the middle of the job. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could happen. <laughs> so concrete is a really, really cool material. It pours out like a liquid and then it dries into a rock, basically. Isn't that crazy? It's awesome. It is, if you think about it. I mean, it seems so mundane because it's everywhere. Some other cool things are that concrete, when it's drying or curing, it's a chemical reaction. So that means you could pour it underwater. You could do a lot of things like that. And if it rained on this, it would still dry. And actually it would be better for the concrete. If it was raining on it, it would make it cure a little slower. And it generates its own heat as it's curing. So the first night, this will stay pretty warm, even if it's below freezing. But after that, you'd wanna cover it and insulate it if it's way below freezing so that the remaining liquid in it, the remaining water would not freeze and cause the concrete to crack. <music> lab is done. That's it for today. Thanks for building with us and we will see you next time. No, seriously, thanks for building with us. We really appreciate that. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> you excited? Yeah. yeah.